and it's never been an effort like I sweated or had to work. I never sweated doing any of it. Like he did all the work, which is really great. He did the direction. And he's, there have been times he's helped me because there, was, uh, there have been times I was physically just tired, exhausted or whatever, and I'm doing the play. And my mind is like, I'm like, oh, where, where am I at? What, what am I? And it was as if he said, you're right here and brought me right back to where I was. And we kept going. And so I'm great. I'm never up there alone. Thank God. Have you ever wondered just how Play's Own Word got started or been curious with other questions? Because today we take a peek behind the curtain in a rare post-play discussion of Play's Own Word Theater. Hello and welcome to Play's Own Word Radio, where we discuss, analyze, work, and play on the Word of God. Thank you for joining us on this excursion today. Let's join Pastor Teddy, also known as Fred David Kenny Jr., the founder of Play's Own Word Theater, as he does a deep dive into the Word of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Josh Taylor. My name is Fred David Kenny Jr., and this is Plays on Word Radio. Welcome to you, yes, you, listening right now. Okay, so today we have something kind of special for you going on here. Um, we recently did our Pete presentation, our Pete play down at Sandy Cove Ministries down in Maryland. It's right on the Chesapeake Bay. Oh, it's a great place, man. It's, it's just it's an awesome place to go. You can go on vacation there. You can uh, go down. They have all kinds of different kind of events happening, all kinds of retreats going on. Uh, you know what? You need to just go to sandycove.org and check them out like right after this program. Um, but we did our Pete play down there. And Andrea Hampton, who is the director of program ministries down at Sandy Cove, uh, she invited us to come down and do our Pete presentation for the couples retreat down there. And that's what we did. But she flipped the script and she interviewed us. So we are going. <laughs> so we are going to play the interview of Andre Hampton interviewing Plays on Word. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So we're just going to do a little bit of Q&A. The- I'm just going to open it up to the house before I do one of my uh, sessions of Midday with Andrea and Midnight with Andrea right now. Amen. Um, podcast. Um, but I think just to get us started, I think we are all just amazed at how the scripture was just read, but it came out in such a theatrical way. Can you tell us just a little bit as people formulate questions, how much of a challenge is that? It's Actually, it's really not that much of a challenge for me. Because I, I love the Word of God, and the Word of God at one point became my music. You think of your favorite song, and if someone starts singing your favorite song, or if you hear a section of your favorite song, you actually don't even hear, hear a section. There used to be a TV show called, remember a show called Name That Tune? Yeah. And I'd be amazed, because I'm going back a little bit, but they'd be able to play like a... And somebody would be like, yeah, that's uh, whatever. And they would name the tune from yeah. that little clip. Well, the scripture very much became my music uh, 20 years ago when the Lord just took away any desire to listen to any music. And I was in the music business, believe it or not. And I just didn't, couldn't listen to anything. The only thing I could listen to was Mozart. That was it. Ah. But what I did, I had the Bible on CD. And the Lord had me listening to the scripture over and over. I'd put the book of Romans on and go to sleep listening to the book of Romans. And I, 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 was, I just learned where I could, it soaked in at a real deep level. And so uh, that was one of the tools that the, the Lord used. So it's, it's not really hard for me to act it out because for so long I had been just contemplating and thinking about the word of God. And I, you know, I really can't take much credit. I'm the dumbest guy I know. It's really the Holy Spirit. He's the one who does the work. So anything magical that you see, uh-huh. he gets the credit. I'm just the lightning rod. He's the lightning. Well, do we have any questions out here? You, you, is there a burning question? Anyone has anything? Because I got a whole lot. Well, yes, ma'am. How did you get started in this? How oh, did you get how do started, I get started in this yeah. was her question. Well, uh, I was serving as a teaching elder at a church in New Jersey and... I was doing the singles ministry at my house. 
And I had a house full. It was growing exponentially. I had like 40 something people in my house. Mm -hmm. And we were coming up on the book of Ruth. We were teaching through the Bible. And the Lord, he challenged me. He said, go act it out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, act it it out? (laughs) What are you talking about? So, but the book of Ruth is four chapters. It's like it's four acts. And so I said, okay. I pretended to be Gamaliel, who was Paul's teacher. I pretended to be a, a, a first century rabbi acting out or teaching the book of Ruth. So I had the book and I, as I was going through it, I was dramatizing the, 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 the text. So when uh, Naomi says to Ruth, you know, you go back to your family. If, you, if I had a child now, would you wait for him to grow up to marry him? And Ruth says, no, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And where you die there, I'll be buried. And he, if God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you from me. Mm. And I remember you know, doing it that way. When I was done with the book of Ruth, I looked up and everybody in my house was like. <laughs> and that's where I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There, there's, there's some power to telling, to storytelling. Ah, yes. To the storytelling aspect. So yes. I went to the senior pastor because I also was doing the Wednesday service. And I said, yo, man, I got, I got an idea. I, w- I want to act out the, uh, the scripture for the Wednesday service. And he was like, no, 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 no. Just <laughs> stay in your lane. Just teach, teach the scripture. Do, do what we normally do. And I was like, yes. oh, okay, okay, all right. No problem. And so some years went by where I kind of stopped. I, I, you know, and that got squashed. And then for my birthday, my wife Katie and her mom took me to a Bobby McFerrin concert in Philadelphia, and we were close, maybe uh, eight rows from the stage, and I'm sitting there in the concert, and I'm watching the concert, and then all of a sudden, God downloaded three seconds of a play that I would end up doing, but I was sitting there, and it was a high-definition 4K surround sound straight-up vision where Bobby was whatever, and then I saw the scene of Joseph being thrown into the cistern. Oh. You remember that? Yeah, yes. we did Genesis. Joe. And I was, it was three seconds. It was like, boom, 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 gone. And I was like, what, Lord, whoa, whoa. I know you just did that because that was not me. I didn't eat anything strange. What was that about? Was I that, and so was this your actual reaction while you're sitting at the Bobby McFerrin show? I'm at show the, and you, like the and music's you're... going on. Right, right, and right. And all of a sudden, boom, the vision. Uh-huh. Gone. And then I'm like, Lord, what, what, is Katie, that, what does that mean? Katie, did you know what was going on? You... She was not even sure. I was, it, was, it, was, it was absolutely bizarre. It was, it was so real. It was mm-hmm. tangible. I could, I could feel it. And so for the next month, that was in November. And for the next month, I went home. I was still like, I was like, what does that mean? I don't know what this means. Mm-hmm. Are you telling me I'm going to be doing something, a play or something? And for over the next month, he downloaded again, kept downloading the entire play. Like, and, did, and did you write these things down? Or you know how we dream and, you, and for a right. half split second you remember and then five minutes later you forget. Did you write it down or is it just in there? At and first, I, still, I didn't know what was going on until he, it was completely clear. He's downloading this stuff. And I'm like, okay. I still wasn't sure it was a play, but it was, he said, I, and I didn't hear an audible voice. He was like, go, down, go downstairs to my basement. That's my laboratory. Go downstairs and act it out. Mm-hmm. And I went downstairs and acted out Genesis Joe. The, and, and he directed, because uh, there were a couple areas where I could tell he was like, no, try it from the other angle. Try it this way. <laughs> like clear direction. And yes. then I sat down at the piano and had the whole song. I literally sat at the piano and it was as if he was playing. And I was like, okay, okay. And he gave me the, the first song, the second song, gave me the music. Oh, yeah. And some of those songs are on They're, here. Oh, on all of CD. them are on there. All oh, of them. all of them. Oh, yes. Even yeah. the ones from tonight. I yep. see this. Yep. Who is this? Yep. Yes. yes. He is alive. He is alive. Yes. We remember that one. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Doing that. that was a good one. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We had another question over here somewhere. Oh, you know what? Yes. Let me just finish the last part of that. Oh, so, Okay. He, 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 yes. he downloaded the whole play. I didn't know what was going on. I called my buddy who used to do a Friday event where he invited churches to come out first Friday of each month. And we have a time of prayer, praise, uh, worship, a devotion through the scripture. And I called him. I said, Mike, 
I think the Lord gave me something, man, uh, a drama thing. Uh, can, can, can I come and do it? He said, brother, man, anything you need. <laughs> actually said it just like that. If you listen to our, our radio podcast, yes. I interviewed him. And oh, you're going to yes. laugh. You're going to wow, that was pretty good because he, he's, yeah. <laughs> I think he's in episode number 12 or something like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. he said, brother, anything you need, man, you had the whole night. And I was like, okay, because it might take the whole night. I don't know. And we mm -hmm. went and did it. And uh, the people were am amazed. Wow. And the night before, I did a dress rehearsal for my wife, Katie, just her in the living room. And afterwards, her response, she just looked at me like this. And I'm thinking to myself, uh-oh, we're going to bomb. Oh, uh, this is not good. <laughs> this is, I knew it was a mistake. I knew it. I'm like, oh, this was terrible. This is a mistake. Yeah. And, she's, and she looked at me, and then she goes, wow. And she, what it was, she was processing what she just saw because- yes. What am I? What did I just see? What was that? So I think we did too here tonight. Right, right. You guys right. understand that? It's like, wait, what? What well, did, is he really doing that? And then we went and did it, and and we've been doing it since. There were some pastors that were at that first performance, and every one of them came up to me. You have to come to our church. When you, can you come next week and do right, that? And right. so, and we were word of mouth for for many years. And then we, in 2018, I think we officially became a nonprofit ah. because people were giving us money and stuff like that. And we yes. want transparency and all that. So I yes. was like, okay. And the Lord was in it and he was guiding and he was providing mm -hmm. and he was making it clear that he wanted us to go out. And now we've been halfway around the world. We, we did that play you just saw in Albania. Yes, you've been in Albania and, and, yeah, and messaging and, yeah. in the streets. Yeah, in the yes. streets. And, and uh, we did the, yeah, and we were able to preach that gospel because the gospel's in every one of our plays. Wow. We were able to preach that um, to people mm -hmm. that have never heard the name of Jesus, never heard about him. Mm -hmm. And we were able to say, Jesus, he sent us here to you because he loves you. Yeah. And they were like, and they took Bibles and, and they were, yeah, it was some mm -hmm. real life-changing type stuff for us. So mm -hmm. we're on mission. You can help pray us out. You know, be part of the prayer team. Help, please Amen. pray for them. We need your prayer over anything. Okay, Amen. sure. Amen. Thank right, you. Cool. Praise God. Absolutely. Thank you. And if any, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to put it out there because they probably want, if someone has, they need a van. I'm just Amen. saying. <laughs> Yeah, if you because go, they, they have come here a number of times, yeah. and 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 I just love the beauty of their ministry. How it is, I don't I don't know what the official name of it is when when you just put it all in your car mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. and, you, and you travel hither and yon. And so my prayer every time they pull up right back here is Lord, yep. please provide them with a a van Amen. for transportation. Because everything is packed so, in it. Yeah, so I I'll say it on their behalf. God bless um, you. So Thank we, you. so we we are praying for that indeed. In fact, Katie did a video where where we did a time lapse of me packing the car. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's about 30 seconds of pure Oh, I got to watch pure that. Pure science. <laughs> That's it's good. Tetris at the highest level. Yes, I'm like, indeed. okay. You I all should this. see when they pack it up. <laughs> Cuz I we usually bring our keyboard, sometimes a sound system. We bring all we bring the boat, we bring tables, all the gear, everything you see mm -hmm. and fit mm -hmm. it into this car and it's it's mm -hmm. a miracle every single time. Like, now, now here's a question. How do you determine about the props? Ah. Because I take did the props travel to Albania as oh, well? Yeah, uh, this boat didn't. They created a boat for me. I sent them the dimensions and the basic idea. I mean, it's cardboard. It was, this yes. was the prototype. This was never supposed to be the final one. Oh, I see. This boat has been probably over 100 performances by now. This boat has been mm -hmm. all over the place. It's mm -hmm. been to California. It's been wow. beat up everywhere. And uh, it's been in jails. And uh, mm. it was originally the prototype. I was going to uh, build another one off of that. But I, after I built it, I was like, I'm kind of tired. I'm just going to leave it. Maybe it'll, it'll do. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I sent pictures of what we did and they built a boat. Wow. It wasn't quite the same, but it, at that point it was like, well, we're here. We're going to have to make do with it. Right. And um, during one of the plays we were outside and that boat was, it was really windy. And I'm like, okay, how am I, how am I going to work the boat <laughs> blowing away into the play? Yeah. <laughs> while I'm doing it, you know, and right. that was a challenge. Right. But, I yeah. love it. I love it. You have come here, you've been here for Season Citizens yes, Day, yeah. and you were here in November for that uh, a couples weekend, and we and we met um we met Genesis Joe. Oh yeah, yeah. And we have now met Pete. Mm -hmm. Who else does the Lord have locked up in that spirit of yours <laughs> ready to come out? Oh well, we did Saul Paul when we were in Albania. So we did Pete, but when we went out into the villages. Uh, we did a 20-minute short Saul 
Becoming Paul play. Oh. And oh. yeah, and that one is, 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 kind of, is really cool because Paul, he's an old man and he's writing. He's writing 2 Timothy. He's in jail and he's writing and, and he looks up and the people are the guards guarding him, the Roman guards. Oh. So we were able to do that. And the scene, we give the gospel in every one of our plays and where the gospel goes forth in that play mm -hmm. is where Ananias comes up to, to Saul after he's been blinded by the Lord and he had lost his eyesight for three days and Ananias was minding his own business and the Lord says, Ananias, Ananias. And he says, here I am, Lord. And the Lord says, I want you to go to Straight Street. There's a man from Tarsus named Saul. He's praying and he's seen you come lay your hands on him so he receives his eye. And Ananias was like, Lord, I heard what that, I heard what that guy's done to your people. And, and even here, he, I heard he's got letters to take your people and have them, have them hold off. And Jesus says, no, he's my chosen interest, instrument. And so Ananias is obedient and he goes... And he says, Brother Saul, um, the Lord Jesus told me to lay hands on you so you, you would regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And Saul, Saul was down, and Saul, and he's all of a sudden, something like scales falls from his eyes, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture started making sense to him. And that's where the gospel comes in. And I remember in Albania preaching the gospel there. I said, yeah, because that every single man has fallen short of the glory of God and has, has sinned against God, every single person from Adam on. But God loved every one of us. And I pointed to all these Albanians and said, God loved you. So he came and lived the perfect life. Jesus came and lived the perfect life and he was put to death on the cross. It's similar to the way I do it in Pete there. Put to death on the cross and raised on the third day. And by us, um, by us putting our faith in him, we stand before God. And I said this in their own language. I said, unyam perfect. And it means I am perfect. And I said it in their own language. So I didn't need the interpreter. There were a few lines that I pulled out and I said, we stand before God, unyam perfect. And they were like, and I said, yes. And it's by trusting in him. And they, these people, a lot of them never even heard the Name of Jesus. Uh, Albania is actually, it's in the Bible. It's in, it's in Romans 15, 19. Mm. It's a, a lyricum. So it's, Paul talks about he wanted to preach all over throughout, you know, the, the whole Roman world to, to a lyricum. And it's, it's a lyricum. And there's a bridge there, right? It's right next to Macedonia. And there's a bridge that Paul, it's a 2,000 something year old bridge. There's, if you go on our website, you'll see it. I took a picture standing on it. I'm like, I, oh, yeah. it's, that's a bridge that Paul is, rumored to have walked over. I see. So yeah, it was really, it was just really cool. So yeah. We yes. also have Dan coming up. So Dan, yes. he's an old man. Give us a little peek. Yeah. Dan's an old man and he kind of, he's, he's, it's Pete runs down the aisle. Dan is kind of, you know, and he stumbles and falls over. And as he's getting up, he's an old man. And he looks at the crowd and then he sees something and he goes, oh, okay. I'm right where I expected to be, in this den with all you hungry lions. Uh oh. But I see the Lord sent his angel to shut your mouth. So since we're going to be here a while, let me tell you how I ended up here. <laughs> Amen. Back when I was about, I don't know, I was a teenager, Nebuchadnezzar came up against Jerusalem and I lived in Jerusalem with me, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, my, my, my friends. You know, we were, we were the nobles and, uh, you know, nobility. Yes. And that's where he starts telling his story. Mm -hmm. And that's a... Uh, yeah, we're, we're hoping to have that hopefully in, a, in possibly a couple months. In a couple of months. Yeah, Amen. I mean, we're, we're trying to get that spun up. As, I was working on it last week. And it was, it's, it's really, yeah. You, you, you know what? I just have to ask Katie, your wife, is, 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 is like dinner time on a Thursday interesting <laughs> when all of a sudden he's, he's downloaded something? And Katie, what, what's life like at the house when Pray for her. All, all of a sudden? <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. I mean, um, Clearly, God has anointed him to do this. And clearly, God brought me alongside to help him. And so, it's, when he gets, when he gets another project, it's like, okay, what's he doing next? It's always a fun, it's, it's a lot, it's like living with a lot of people, though. Amen. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Do we have any more yeah. questions out here? Because I know. Do you have a theater background? Ah, do I have a theater background? She asked. Yeah, inquiry minds want to yes. know. Yes. 
Well, yeah, when I was, when I was in high school, I was, I was one of the jocks. I was played on the football team and I was in, on the weight lift, power lifting team and ran track, but I was also part of the drama club and I was in choir and uh, I was, you know, musician. So um, when I was in drama club, uh, I got the leads. I played, we were laughing about it last night. Luck be a lady tonight. <laughs> luck be a lady tonight. Luck if you've ever been a lady to begin with. Luck be a lady tonight. I was Sky Masterson. Nicely, nicely is back there. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. You're rocking a boat. So yeah, I was in uh, uh, Guys and Dolls. I played Sky Masterson. I also, I also played um, Bernardo in West Side Story. Chino. He's with my sister. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I played, you know, I had, I had some of the leads, but I learned stage presence yes. early in high school. I learned stage presence, how to stand and so people could see. And facial expressions are really important in what I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can't see my face, you're missing like 60% of what's going on. Yeah, because it has to be kind of large because I could see it yeah. all the way back there. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. And there are, there are, you know, there are rules to it. I had a lady come up to me. She... She was uh, in theater and she was, it really blessed me because she, she appreciated what I was doing technically from a technical aspect. Yeah. She was like, I was noticing where you were on the stage and how you went from so-and-so and so-and-so, -so, you know, and, and how you delivered, because there's an element of, of comedian in what we do too. You go from drama, from crying, and then boom, all of a sudden you, you're laughing. And I'm like, I'm laughing, but I should be crying right now. You know, the, and the Lord designed all that. So um, in college, I didn't do any, uh, any drama, anything like that until later on when I was, then the Lord said, I want you to act out Ruth. And I was like, okay. Mm. And that was, the, and then some years went by after that, maybe five years went after that. And then he gave me the download of Genesis Cho. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's never been an effort like I sweated or had to work. I never sweated doing any of it. Like he did all the work, yeah. which is really great. He did Amen. the direction and he's, mm -hmm. there have been times he's helped me because there, was, uh, there have been times I was physically just tired, exhausted or whatever, and I'm doing the play and my mind is like, I'm like, oh, where, where am I at? What, what am I? And it was as if he said, you're right here and brought me right back to where I was and we kept going. And so I'm great. I'm never up there alone. Thank mm -hmm. God. How do you keep that energy up? Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. Holy Spirit energy. Amen. I, I kid you not. Like that sounds like a Christianese no. type of answer. Yeah. Let me tell you, it is, it's the, the Holy Spirit of God and yeah. the excitement of the word. I'm just excited about the word. Like I resonate when I hear the word of God, my spirit, the spirit within me is like, oh, it's like drinking water when you're like really parched. Like, Oh, yes, I love, you know, my soul loves the word of God and it can be anything. It'd be the shortest version above. Jesus wept. Yes. That's enough for me to go. And there was a point where I would not go to sleep until I got a dose of the word of God. Even if it's just Jesus wept, I'm gonna, I, wanna, I want to see, I want to see something of the word of God every day of my life. And oh. you know what I mean? Just even if, even if I don't understand it. Yes. Because some of the stuff in, in, in Ezekiel, I'm like, I don't want you. <laughs> some of Daniel's visions, I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't matter. I'm getting it. You, yeah. you get it in you. And it can just be one verse. And, uh, and that has paid off in benefits for me. Mm -hmm. So sounds like operating in the fullness and the beauty of the power of your yeah. purpose. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. Well, we're going to continue this interview on the next episode episode of Plays on Word Radio. Again, I, I definitely check out Sandy Cove Ministries. Go to sandycove.org. Check out uh, Andrea Hampton. She's got uh, two podcasts that she's doing down there. You can find them on the website. Really is an awesome place to go. Their slogan, it says, they deliver the message of hope that Jesus never fails. That's on the sign out there. And it's true. He never fails. Put your trust in him. If you have not put your trust in him, how do you do it? You simply ask him to come into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Fill you with his Holy Spirit. Live through you. Something along those lines. And the scripture says, if you have, you pray that, you pray that prayer from your heart. You have passed from death to life and all heaven breaks out into rejoicing. Amen. So until we meet again on, on the air here, 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This program was made possible by the Plays on Word family of supporters. To find out more, check out our website at playsonword.org.